I'm going to break down all the equipment you need to start a pressure washing business. And I'm going to take you through the bare essentials that you're going to need in order to get out there and be efficient, be proficient and be profitable. I've been doing this for a long time and I know it works. I know it doesn't work. And I know there's probably a lot of questions that you have about the equipment, the right machine, what soft wash pump you need. And I'm going to do my best to break that down for you today, as well as letting you know what the most important things that you need to have with you on the job are. I'm talking about the tools of the trade, the parts and the little consumables that will go bad. And and a lot of the time, these are things that you don't know you need until you need them, and then it's too late. So I'm going to go slow, and I'm going to be thorough, and I'm going to lay everything out the way that I wish it had been laid out for me because it would have saved me a bunch of time and a bunch of money buying the wrong things, wasting time on the wrong things. And with that being said, for everybody that is just starting out, I am also going to include links to everything that I'm talking about in this video in the description down below. So let's get into it. Okay, first, we are going to talk about pressure washing and everything you need. Then we'll talk about soft washing and uh, what you need there. So obviously one of the first things that you're going to need is a pressure washer. And yeah, you can run down to Home Depot or you can go down to Lowe's or really any big box and you can buy a machine off the shelf. But I caution you about this for multiple reasons. They are not intended for everyday use. They are built for homeowners with parts and motors that may look the same, but they are not built the same. A lot of people ask me, can I start with a little machine? And the answer is yes, you can, but I don't think you should. When you're looking at pressure washers, I know a lot of new guys they get all hung up on PSI, which is pounds per square inch. How much pressure these machines have? And I got to tell you, it's not about the pressure. It's about the GPM or the gallons per minute. You want to get as many gallons per minute as you can afford because this is going to make things a lot faster with you. You're going to be able to wash houses and concrete a lot faster. Uh, the difference between a little machine and even a four gallon per minute machine is absolutely crazy. And I promise you, if you go cheap early, you're going to be upgrading soon because you're going to see what a difference it can make. I would also urge you to stay away from Harbor Freight pressure washers, any off-brand Chinese-made crap. They will break down. Uh, and yeah, it's going to save you some money initially, but you have to ask yourself, is it worth it? Honda, Kawasaki, Kohler, all great brands. And of course, General Pump is one of the most solid brands out there for pumps. So look for one of those combinations. And I'm going to put links down below for a four gallon per minute machine that is built to last, as well as a 2.9 for those of you that are on a budget. Now, the next two things that you're going to need are going to be a high pressure hose and a water supply hose. There are lots of different options here. And some starter machines are going to come with a high pressure hose, typically about 50 feet, which is not going to be enough because the last thing you want to be doing is hauling your pressure washer all around the yard. So the more hose you have, the further you're going to be able to go without rearranging everything, moving hoses, the machine, which adds time onto the job. So you have a couple of choices here. Uh, for the high pressure hose, you have one wire and you have two wire hoses. So let's go over the pros and cons of each of those. The pros of a one wire pressure washing hose it's more affordable, it's flexible, it's lighter, and it is easier to maneuver as you're pulling it around the yard. The cons, uh, it can usually typically only handle between like 3,000 to 4,000 PSI. It's less durable than a two-wire hose, meaning it can bust faster. And you're dragging these things across concrete every single day, and that causes wear and tear, and these aren't as tough as uh, a two wire. And that of course brings us to the pros of the two wire pressure washing hose. The pros is it's stronger, it's more durable and it will last longer. And they can also handle higher pressure from like 4,000 up to 6,000 and even more. They're more resistant to damage. And obviously that means their premature failure rate is gonna be much lower. The cons, they're more expensive than the one wire hoses and they are somewhat stiffer. They are less flexible and they are heavier, which means a little bit more work for you. So your budget, and your machine are going to have some impact on what you buy. Obviously, if you have a 5,500 PSI machine, you're going to want to go with something that can handle that, right? Which would be the two wire hose. If you're using something that's a little bit smaller and you want to save some money, not as strenuous as you're pulling them around the yard, then the one wire may be the better fit for you. The other two options are standard black hose or a gray non-marking hose. I would definitely go with the gray non-marking hose. It's a better hose. You're not going to leave marks when you pull it across concrete or pool decks or anywhere else. And uh, it's good because you don't really want to have to clean up after yourself, right? And leaving those marks. I would also recommend having an extra 50 feet of hose with you, high pressure hose, 
all the time because you never know what could happen. And the last thing that you want to do is be out on the job and not be able to finish that job because you had a hose break and you don't have a replacement. So always have a backup. And before we talk about the next hose that you're going to need, I did want to mention that if you are thinking about starting a pressure washing business, then check this out. We put together the most intensive training the industry has ever seen. Over six hours of in-depth training on the best methods for cleaning houses, roofs, driveways, and every other surface you might encounter on a residential job site. How to wash covers the chemicals to use, how to mix them, the equipment, the best methods to make you the most efficient and profitable you can be. Safety and property protection, specialty chemicals, as well as pro tips, and so much more. It's yours to keep and review forever. How to wash is less than the price of one house wash, so don't wait. Click the link below. Okay, so the next hose that you are going to want to have is your water supply hose. We personally use Flexzilla. We have used all kinds of different hoses over the course of the years. Garden hoses, uh, different types of uh, brands and, and, and makes and all that. Flexzilla, it's relatively inexpensive. It's super lightweight. It doesn't kink. It doesn't collapse. It's got good flow. It's got swivel grips and it's going to last. Again, depending on how much you want to move, your machine around will determine how much hose that you want to buy. But at some point, you're probably going to have a trailer mounted or a truck mounted pressure washer and you're probably most likely going to be using hose reels. And we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to talk about is your gun. You want to have a high quality gun. You want to spend a couple more bucks on this because it's something that you're going to be using every single day. And you would be surprised at how tired your hand and your forearm can get throughout the course of that day when you're using a cheaper gun. Uh, it's not going to be fun. I assure you of that. We like the Sutner ST2305. It has the easy pull design, which helps to reduce the wear and tear on your hand all day. It also has a higher flow rate. This one can actually handle up to 12 gallons per minute, I think, which is a substantial amount of water or cleaning solution that you're spraying out there, which makes it a lot more efficient and faster. And you can go cheaper and get the same end result. But if you're willing to spend a couple extra bucks, you're going to thank me later. And not only uh, is your arm and your forearm and your hand and everything going to thank me, but they're going to last a lot longer. So at the end of the day, you're going to be spending less because you're not going to have to replace it as quickly. So now that you have your hose, your gun, your machine, you're going to need to be able to apply the detergent. So we're going to talk about a chemical injector and we are going to talk about the nozzles that you need to have. We use general pump chemical injectors and a chemical injector is something that you want to have at least one extra one as a backup on your truck. I prefer to have a couple. You also want to make sure that the chemical injector that you buy uh, is the right one that is rated for your machine. These come in like three to five gallon per minute and five to eight, as well as other sizes, but those are the most common. And essentially what this does, what a chemical injector does, it allows you to pull chemical from a bucket or a tank. It goes through that little teeny hose into the chemical injector out the hose onto the surface that you're cleaning. What this does is it eliminates the need for a pump up sprayer, which obviously are not gonna be very efficient when you're applying detergent. So it just makes things go a lot faster. You can also use an X-Jet. There is a link for that down there below as well. I'm not as big a fan of those as I am of a chemical injector, but that again is just a personal opinion. And of course, at the end of your gun, you're gonna wanna have your spray nozzles. So you're gonna wanna have a soap tip, you're gonna wanna have a high pressure tip, and you're gonna wanna have a long reach tip. Now, these have have a number of different names, J rods, tall reach tips, shooter tips, but all of these tips and a J rod is a little holder, but all these tips are rated specifically for your machine. Um, and I would definitely recommend using a J rod, which is basically, like I said, a little holder. Um, and it's got all of your fittings on it, all of your nozzles on it uh, in one place. So you're not fumbling around in your pockets, looking for your tips, losing tips because that's annoying. And I promise you, you will lose these things. And I would also recommend having backups of this because again, you don't want to lose something. You don't want to be without something and not be able to finish your job. Okay, so the next thing that you are going to need are all of the fittings for your hoses and your guns. Uh, you'll pretty much exclusively be using 3 8 and uh, quarter inch fittings. Uh, couplings and plugs. There are a variety of these. Your hoses are going to require three eighths. Your gun is going to require both three eighths and quarter inch. I prefer to go with stainless. They have brass. The stainless are going to last longer. Your high pressure hoses are going to require three eighths. Your gun is going to require both three eighths and quarter inch. And another thing that you're going to need to have on you at all times is the quarter inch and three eighths chemical resistant O-rings. Your female couplings, the one at your nozzle and the one on your hoses are all going to have O-rings on them. These will deteriorate over time. They will get lost. They will get blown out. And if you don't have extra O-rings, then you will have water and chemical spraying everywhere. 
and uh, that's no good. So have backups. You will need these. Another thing for us that we didn't use when we first started was a ball valve. Now, this is a complete game changer. And what high pressure ball valves do is it allows you to switch from your wand, your gun to your surface cleaner and back without ever having to turn off the machine. So no back and forth. Uh, it's also important to get a high quality ball valve because if you go cheap, they will break. And I've also heard horror stories about people that have had their ball valves fail in their hand or close to them and they have been injured. So make sure that the ball valve that you're using is high pressure and high quality because I don't want to see you get hurt. The next thing is one of the most important things, and that is a surface cleaner. If you have ever cleaned a driveway with just a wand and a high pressure tip, you know how long it can take. You also know that the results are not gonna be nearly as impressive as they are with a surface cleaner. There are all kinds of different brands, different sizes, and choosing the right surface cleaner for your pressure washer is important to ensure effective and efficient cleaning. So it's important to know the PSI and the GPM of your machine. Make sure that they are compatible with the surface cleaner that you are looking at. You also have a couple options on the nozzle configuration on the spray bar. You can have two, you can have four. Again, you're looking for something that is going to provide the most even consistent cleaning across the entire width of the surface cleaner, right? And all of these things that we talked about, they come into play. There are also surface cleaners with wheels. There are surface cleaners without wheels. This is just a personal choice. We use both and both of them do a great job. Uh, but again, it just comes down to what you want to use. But a surface cleaner is probably one of the biggest time savers that you're going to find when you're out there on the job. Uh, it is just so much faster, so much more efficient and it really does a much better job providing phenomenal results for your customers, more so than just a wand. So that is really the basic pressure washing equipment that you need in order to get out there, be efficient, be prepared, and deliver quality results for your customers. And now I am going to talk briefly about what you need, at the bare minimum at least, to soft wash with a 12-volt pump. Do some roof washing. Uh, you don't have to spend an arm and a leg here, okay? But I assure you, as your business grows, when you've got more money to reinvest in your business, you're definitely going to want to upgrade to something a little bit more stout, a little bit more reliable. We use Southeast Softwash for everything. They've also got some entry-level products, so you can take a look at that. I did put a link for them down below as well. But if you're on a budget and you want to get out there and offer roof cleaning or just have the ability to lay down a stronger mix on whatever surface it is that needs it, then you're going to want to have a dedicated 12-volt system to accomplish that, okay? And as you can see down below, uh, I put links to a couple different options. You've got 5-gallon, you've got 7-gallon, Remco, Everflow. Uh, and you can set these up to go where they go directly from whatever chemical tank that you're using to the pump, out the pump to your soft wash wand. Again, this is not a high pressure system, so you're not gonna need a high pressure hose. Now, like I had mentioned, these are five or seven gallon per minute pumps. So that means that it consumes five to seven gallons for every single minute. So running it out of a bucket is not gonna be efficient. Uh, you're gonna need some sort of tank for your detergent and your water mixture. And at this point, you're probably gonna be batch mixing. And if you need a batch mix calculator, there is one for free in Quote IQ, which will tell you exactly how much bleach you need, how many gallons, how much water, how many gallons of water that you need to achieve exactly what percentage it is that you're trying to spray on whatever it is that you're trying to clean. And then at the end of the hose, you're gonna to wanna to have some sort of chemical resistant spray gun. Now there are several Several options for this. There will be links down below in the soft wash section. Also understand that you will be needing nozzles specifically designed for the 12 volt pump. Okay. It's completely different. They're not interchangeable with your pressure washer. Uh, don't do that because you could burn up some pumps if they're not the right size. And again, all of this uh, will be linked down below. Uh, this is a very simple, very easy and very cheap setup. And it will allow you to get out there and do some roof cleaning on a budget. Now with all of that out of the way, one of the first things that I would personally upgrade to is a hose reel for your high pressure hose, your water supply hose, and of course your soft wash system if you have one. Hose reels just save you so much time on every single job breaking down as well as setting up. Fighting with hoses is something that you're going to have to deal with. Uh, hose management is very important for efficient operations. And a hose reel, it makes things a lot easier. We used to do a big figure eight along the length of the trailers when we first started. It was relatively efficient, but it was not nearly as fast as having the ability to, uh, you know, 
reel up your hoses super fast. So at some point, I would probably think it would behoove you to upgrade, uh, which is going to make your life a lot easier. And that is it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And I hope you got some good information that you can implement in your own business. We've got tons of videos on the channel. So check some of those out. Uh, and we can teach you all kinds of things from your sales and your marketing to everything else. And we also have how to wash, which is going to help you out tremendously, kind of shortcut the learning curve and get you way ahead of where you would be if you tried to learn all this on your own. Don't forget to use Quote IQ to run your business profitably, efficiently. And I promise you that if you implement the things within Quote IQ, it's going to help you get to customers so much faster and you're going to close a lot more jobs. So check that out. Good luck to you. Please leave comments for us down below and let us know what you think. Again, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you.